This is the third section of chapter three on algorithms and graphs. And this is applying Prim's algorithm to a distance matrix. So what is the algorithm? Well, we already know what a uh, distance matrix is. It shows a um, weighted graph in a grid. So the numbers in the grid tell us the distances um, or weights between different vertices and we can apply Prim's algorithm to this. Now, when we're just using it on a network, we start at any vertex. So we choose any starting vertex in the same way. Okay, what do we do after that? Well, we're gonna delete this row. So if I choose, let's say vertex A, as my starting vertex, I'm going to delete row A, and I'm going to number this column, my first one, I'll number it one. So let's just put here that it'd be like one, then two, then three, and so on. Then what we do in that column, we delete the, um, or we circle the lowest undeleted number. Okay, now I'm going to put here in any column because when we apply this algorithm a second, a third, a fourth time, we're going to have lots of numbered columns and we're going to look at all of the columns to find the lowest undeleted number, just like in Prim's algorithm on a network. Um, what we do is we look at all the vertices and we find the lowest weighted edge from any vertex. So we're going to find the lowest undeleted number in any column. So with the number that we circled, we repeat these steps. So we would delete that row, we number this column two, we circle the lowest number in any of those two columns. Then with that circled number, we delete that row, number it so we now have three columns, find the lowest undeleted number in those three columns and so on. And we're gonna continue these steps here until all rows have been deleted. Then what we would do is with the numbers that we have circled, we can use that to construct the network, which would be the minimum spanning tree. So we're gonna apply Prim's algorithms to this distance matrix to find a minimum spanning tree. It tells us to start at A. So since we're starting at A, uh, let's number this as one, yeah. And then what do we do? The algorithm says delete the row. So that's what we're gonna do, delete the row. Then we look in column one and we find the lowest value in column one and we circle it. So there we go, which was C. That was the lowest value in that column. So now what do we do? Well, we go to column C and we're gonna label this to and then we're going to delete row C. Don't delete the number that we've um, actually circled. Now we've got two columns to look at now, either column one or column two, and we're looking for the lowest entry in either one of these two columns. And that lowest entry is going to be 23. So I circle it, which is D. So Column D, I label and I cross out row D. So now I've got these three columns to look at and I want to find the lowest entry in any one of these three columns. Now it's gonna be a 15 here. So I circle the 15, which is in row B. So I delete now row B. And now I look for the lowest uh, value that's not been crossed out or circled in one of these four columns here, and that's going to be 71. So I circle the 71, and that is um, E, so E should be number five here. Numbered number five, I cross out row E, and since now they've all been crossed out, then um, the algorithm is finished.
So now I'm ready to draw my minimum spanning tree. So let's draw it. So I know between vertex A and C it has a weight of 12. So let's just draw A here and C here and put a weight of 12 on it. So that one's done. Here, I know that between A and D it has a weight of 23. So let's just add another one here. D, 23. Um, right, so this one here means that between B and D it's 15. So this is going to take me to B, which is 15. And then the last one down here says between B and E, that's going to be 71. So B, E, 71. So the total weight of the minimum spanning tree is going to be 12 plus 23 plus 15 plus 71 which gives me a total weight of 121. So you'll recognize this distance matrix, it's from the previous example. And this part of the question is asking us to work out the number of comparisons required to complete this at Prim's algorithm. Now, there's something we need to know about the number of values we have and the number of comparisons needed to work out which is the smallest number. And this is the information that we need. If we have n values, it requires n minus one comparisons to find the smallest or the largest value. And we're gonna use that to help us answer this question. So if we were doing this like before, we'd be starting here, which means we'd cross out row A, and we would be looking at these four values to decide which one is the smallest. So that would be four values, which would mean three comparisons. OK, so that would be the first thing that we do. Um, we know that the smallest value would have been the 12. So we'll circle that, cross this out. Then we know we'll be looking at values in both both uh, columns A and C. So one, two, three, four, five, six values this time, which means five comparisons, five comparisons. And uh, we would find the smallest one is the 23. So we would circle that 23. That gets crossed out and now we know we're looking at column D as well. So how many values are we comparing this time? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six values, five comparisons, six values, five comparisons like this. Then we would have located the smallest, which would have been the 15, so we would circle this. Okay, so that leaves the 15 here, which means we're going to cross out uh, row B, and B is going to be the next column that we look at as well. So how many values are there going to be? One, two, three, four values. So that means three comparisons, four values is three comparisons. So how many comparisons are there going to be in total? So that's three plus three plus five plus five. So that is 16 comparisons that are going to be made. Okay, in part B, we want to work out the number of comparisons needed for an N times N distance matrix. So maybe if I just sketch out what that would look like. Obviously, I'm not going to go all the way to N. So like one, two, three, and then like N minus one, and then N. And going down is going to be the same one, two, three, and N minus one, 
and then n here. So assuming that I start with uh, this column, so that means that this row would be crossed out and the number of values I'm going to be comparing here is going to be, um, well, I'm going to have n minus one values. Let's write that down, n minus one values. So this is the first time I do it, which means uh, n minus one minus one comparisons. That's the first one. Okay, so let's say I find a value. Um, let's I don't know. Let's say that this one is the smallest here to make it easy. Then I would cross this out like this. Then I would be looking in this column. So now I'm I'm actually going to be looking at values in two columns. This one here and this one here. And the number of values I'm going to be looking at is n minus two. And they're going to be two lots, two columns of n minus two values. So the number of comparisons is going to be two and in brackets n minus two minus one. So always one less. Then let's say that I found that this was the smallest value. So I'd cross this off. I'd look in this column. So now I'd be looking at three columns of n minus three. So you might begin beginning to see a pattern here. Yeah, there is a, a pattern going on. So then three and then n minus three minus one comparisons. Now let's carry this pattern on and let's say we get down to the n minus one row. And actually this is going to be the last comparison that we make because um, we never really compare the last one. Because if you look at this distance matrix here, let's finish this off. So this would have been the last one that we looked at. Can you see that even though it was five by five, there are only one, two, three, four numbers that we picked out. So if it's n by n, the number of values that we're going to pick out is going to be one less than n, n minus one. So when we get to the n minus one, comparison we've we've basically finished if you think about it if you've got n vertices how many edges do you need to join them n minus one so this is what we're finding is the the weight of those edges the minimum weight of n minus one edges for n vertices so this is going to be the last one so if we carry on a pattern this will be n minus one times by n minus n minus one so that will be the number of values and the number of comparisons will be basically this here minus one so n minus one times by n minus n minus one minus one comparisons now i'm going to write these terms out slightly differently. I'm just going to expand the brackets so that you can see a pattern. Right, so hopefully you can see a pattern. So we could write this n minus one minus one like this. The two bracket n minus two minus one like this and so on. I've added this in so you can see the pattern. And even this last term down here could be written like this. And we want to find the sum of these because that's going to be the total number of comparisons. Now, this sum is made up of three different parts. So adding together these bits here, something times by n. The second bit here, where we're subtracting square numbers up to the n minus one square number. And then the bit on the end, is subtracting one. So the bit in the yellow, we can write as n times the sum of r from r equals one up to um, r equals n minus one, because that's where we're stopping. So this equates to the, the bit that's in yellow. 
minus the sum of these squared numbers, so sum of r squared from r equals 1 to n minus 1. So that would equate to the bit that's in green. Then minus the sum of 1s from r equals 1 to n minus 1. And that would equate to the bit that I've highlighted in blue. So let's just uh, clear a bit of space here so that we can now write down what this is algebraically. And you can get these walls from core one sum of series. So here's the formula here. If we apply it, just need another bracket here. Now I color code it. And what I've done, I've underlined where I've used um, n minus one for n. So that bit would be yellow. This bit is like the sum of the r squared from um, r equals one to n minus one. And then this bit in blue here is the sum of the ones from one to n minus one. Now, if we expand the brackets and simplify, I'm not gonna go through all of this, but what this becomes is n cubed minus seven n plus six and all over six or one six. So this would be the number of comparisons needed for an n by n matrix. And then part C says state the order of this implementation. Well, it's going to be the, the highest power here and it's going to be n cubed. So the order is n cubed. So um, you should now be able to complete exercise 3C on pages 63 to 65. Here's a recap of the algorithm. Something else that might be useful um, might be knowing the number of comparisons. So n number n minus one comparisons is needed to compare n values. Just make sure you know how to implement and use this algorithm.